Today, we're discussing 10 more tips and tricks for seven days to die. Now we've got a lot of info to cover and no time to waste, so let's get to it. Tip number one is ammo retrieval. Now let's say you're out and about in the world and you have just looted yourself a brand new weapon, a better weapon, higher quality, better stats, and you want to switch to that weapon as soon as possible. However, you want to get the ammo out of your current weapon. You don't want it to go to waste. Well, there is a very simple way to retrieve the ammo from any firearm in seven days to die. All you have to do is select the weapon uh, that you want to remove the ammo from and simply click modify. So we're going to go ahead and modify our quality one pistol here. Boom. We hit that modify button and immediately you'll notice that our nine millimeter ammo has been taken out of that weapon. If you look down here in the bottom right hand corner, you'll notice that there is a zero now right here. This number right here indicates the amount of ammo that you currently have loaded into your weapon. This number here indicates the total amount of ammunition that you are carrying in your backpack. So right now we have 15 rounds in our backpack and zero rounds in the weapon that we are currently holding. Now we can go ahead and switch over to our level two pistol reload that ammo back into the new weapon and as you can see down in the bottom right hand corner our quality two pistol now has 15 rounds in the magazine switch back over to the quality one we have zero rounds in that magazine zero rounds left in our backpack so we have effectively retrieved the ammunition from our lower quality pistol and installed it in the higher quality pistol. Tip number two is gun parts. Lower quality firearms have extremely low sell prices. So for instance, if we go ahead and open up our inventory and take a look at our quality one pistol here, you'll notice that it currently sells for 44 dukes to the trader. However, if we go ahead and scrap down that pistol and take a look at the sell price for the parts from that pistol, you will notice that these sell for 99 dukes. So for quality one firearms, it is not worth selling the firearm itself. You are much better off scrapping down that firearm and selling the individual parts. You will make a whole lot more money selling the parts than you will selling the completed firearm. Tip number three is Trader Secret Stash. There is a way to open up two secret stash inventories with every trader. Now in order to accomplish this, you are going to need to set things up just a little bit. First thing you need to do is come to your intellect attribute in the skills tab and we're going to take a look at better barter. We want to get our better barter up to level three which requires an intellect of level five. So as you see here my intellect is only level four. That's exactly the way you want to set it up. Now we're going to navigate to our inventory and you are also going to need a pair of nerdy glasses. So we're going to go ahead and toss our nerdy glasses on and hop back over to our our skills. We're going to go back to intellect. Now you'll see that our intellect is up to level five. So if we hop back down into better barter, that will allow us to unlock level three. So we're going to go ahead and unlock level three. Boom. There we go. Better barter level three is now available. So if we talk to trader Bob here and open up his secret stash, there we go. We've got a whole bunch of awesome items that we can purchase. Now, if we go back to our character and remove our nerdy glass, Glasses, you'll see that that bumped our intellect back down to level four. And if we navigate to our better barter tab, you'll see that better barter level three has now been disabled. That's because we no longer meet that minimum attribute requirement in order to utilize this level of the perk. However, if we go ahead and talk to trader Bob again and take a look at his secret stash, you'll notice that his secret stash is completely different. So this little trick will open up two separate secret stash inventories at every single trader. And the great thing about this trick is you can use this at Better Barter 3, 4, and 5. All you'll want to do is make sure that your intellect is one point below where it needs to be in order to unlock the next level of Better Barter. That way, when you put your nerdy glasses on, it'll give you the extra points you need to unlock that level. So for Better Barter level 4, you'll want your intellect at level 6. That way, when you put on your glasses, it'll bump it up to level 7. That will give you access to the secret stash at level 4 and the secret stash at level 3. And the same holds true for level 5 
five. So if you were trying to pull this trick off with a maxed out better barter, you want to get your intellect up to level nine, throw on your nerdy glasses. That will unlock the ability to get better barter level five. And then all you have to do is when you want to see that level five stash, make sure you're wearing your nerdy glasses. Take a look at the inventory, see if there's anything you want. If not, take off your nerdy glasses and take a second look. That will open up a completely different secret stash inventory. Tip number four is sewing kits. Sewing kits are a much more effective healing item in seven days to die than your standard bandage. As you can see here, the standard bandage does not restore any health, does not increase your abrasion healing. The only thing that it does is stop bleeding. However, if you take a look at the sewing kit, not only does the sewing kit stop bleeding, it also sutures lacerations. Plus, the stack size for the sewing kit is double what it is for the bandage. Now, the only downside to the sewing kit is you cannot craft them. However, they are readily available loot items. You will find them everywhere. You'll find them in garbage bags and in practically every loot container in the game. So coming across sewing kits is not terribly difficult whatsoever. And they are vastly superior to the standard bandage when it comes to healing. Allow me to demonstrate. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and trigger a laceration. Boom, and as you see, we're starting to bleed. We have the laceration, and we're gonna heal up with a bandage. All right, that did nothing for the laceration. Yes, it did heal our bleed, or stop the bleeding, but it did not take care of that laceration. So let's try that again with the sewing kits. Let's trigger another laceration. As you see there, boom, we are bleeding. Now let's, let's sew it up with a sewing kit. Boom, there you go. Not only did it stop the bleeding, but it also completely cures that deep laceration. So do not discount how effective sewing kits can be as healing items. In my opinion, they are far superior to your standard bandage. Tip number five is try not to jump with a broken leg. As you see here, I have a broken leg. Now, if we go ahead and start jumping, keep an eye on my hit points. Every time that I hit that jump button, not only does my heal time increase, but I also lose hit points. It is not good to jump when you have a broken leg. Now, let's go ahead and use this cast and heal up that broken leg. Boom, we put the cast on, takes our healing time down to 25 minutes. So you may be thinking, oh great, I'm in the clear, I can go ahead and jump again. Well, you would be wrong. Even with a cast on your leg, when you start jumping, once again, you are going to start losing hit points. Plus, it will increase that healing time. So if you have a broken leg, do not jump if you can avoid it. Tip number six is parkour. The parkour perk, which is located in the agility attribute, is one of the more underrated perks in Seven Days to Die. However, it is also one of the most beneficial. Not only will it reduce the stamina cost cost of jumping, allow you to jump higher, increase your safe fall distance, but you also will never get a sprained or broken leg when falling. That is absolutely huge. Sprained and broken legs in seven days to die are extremely dangerous. So do not discount how beneficial the parkour perk can actually be. So allow me to demonstrate the parkour perk in action. The thing we're really going to focus on is the ability to never break or sprain your leg. As you can see, I am up pretty high in the world. Falling from this distance is definitely far enough to break or sprain my leg. I'm currently in God mode, but we're going to be turning that off. I'm going to plummet straight down to the ground, and you will see I'll take damage, but I will not get a broken or sprained leg. So here we go. Let's start falling, and ow, <laughs> ow, ow. So I took 33 points of damage, but you will notice no broken or sprained leg. Plus, I can jump a lot higher and my jumps do not take nearly as much stamina. The parkour perk is absolutely awesome. Tip number seven is living off the land. Now when you reach the point in the game where you want to start your garden or your farm, I would highly recommend putting at least one point into living off the land. Not only does this one point into living off the land open up a whole bunch of different seed recipes, it also decreases 
increases the cost to craft farm plots, but the major benefit is the ability to harvest two items from wild or planted crops. The reason this is important is because it takes five individual items in order to craft a seed. For instance, if you want to craft a goldenrod seed, you would need five goldenrod flowers in order to craft one goldenrod seed. That can take some time, but by putting a single point into living off the land, you will be able to harvest twice as many resources from every single plant. Not only does that give you more resources to use in recipes, it also gives you the resources a lot faster in which to turn back into more seeds. The more seeds you have, the more plants you can grow, and the faster that you will get resources. So this is kind of an exponential growth scenario. Another great thing about level one of living off the land is you can open it up on day one. You do not have to put any points into fortitude whatsoever in order to get level one of living off the land. Even a single point into this perk can be extremely beneficial to your game. Tip number eight is stamina penalties. It is extremely important to keep in mind that wearing armor comes with stamina penalties. As you can see here, my character is wearing a full set of heavy armor. With that comes a whole lot of stamina penalties. Even with the customized fittings mod on there, I still have a massive stamina penalty while wearing this armor. So if we take a look at our character stats here, you'll notice my stamina penalty right now is 7.11 stamina per second. That means that it takes 7.11 more stamina to perform actions while wearing this armor. Now, as we all know, stamina is extremely important in this game and being able to manage stamina effectively can mean the difference between life and death. So while engaging in stamina heavy actions, actions, you may want to consider taking off your armor. It is always very important to remember the stamina penalties that come with wearing armor sets. Tip number nine is pumping your auger. When you are out and about in the world using your auger to mine up some resources, you need to be very careful that you do not pump the auger. Now, what do I mean by pumping the auger? What I mean is continually activating and deactivating the auger. So let me kind of set this up. If you take a look at the left side of my screen, you will see that I have my heat map showing. Right now we are in chunk 8713 and our heat map percentage is zero. Now if I go ahead and activate my auger, boom, and we are drilling, you will notice that we went up to 1%. So now we'll go ahead and disengage the auger and we will activate it again. Boom. We're back up to 2%. Now, if we continually pump the auger, meaning we continually activate and deactivate it, boom, 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 boom. Every single time you activate your auger, your heat map percentage will increase by one. Get it up high enough and you will start getting those screamer zombies spawning in. So here we go. We are up to 44, 46, 50. There we go. 50%. We're up to 50%. So now our heat map is up to 70%. That is extremely high and we will have zombie screamers spawning into the world anytime now. So when you're out and about using your auger, make sure not to activate and deactivate it over and over again. Try to use a full tank of gas with your auger in one go. So right now we have 191 gas left over. I would highly recommend trying to utilize all 191 gas in one go with one activation. So all you have to do is just hold down that mining button and it'll continue. Yes, we do have that 1% increase, but it is only 1%. The more you activate your auger, the higher your heat map will go. Now this is not necessarily a bad thing if you're looking to farm screamer hordes. Pumping your auger could actually be a good thing. It'll get the screamer's attention a lot faster. But if you're looking to avoid screamer attentions, do not pump your auger. Tip number 10 is the gyrocopter fall. When you are flying your gyrocopter, be very, very careful that you do not exit the vehicle mid-flight. It is 100% possible to do, and it can be extremely deadly. If you're not lucky enough to target your gyrocopter and hop back on before you plummet to your death, you will plummet to your death. So be very, very careful. I'm going to go ahead 
ahead and comically demonstrate this. So I am currently flying my gyrocopter. Now for you controller users, you do not want to hit triangle while in mid flight because that will exit the vehicle. For you mouse and keyboard users, do not press E because that will exit the vehicle. If you accidentally do, try to target your gyrocopter as soon as you can and re-enter it as quickly as possible. Otherwise, this will happen. And down we go. Oh, this is gonna hurt. This is gonna hurt. A boom. <laughs> oh God. So while flying your gyrocopter, be very, very careful that you do not accidentally exit the vehicle in mid-flight. It is possible, it is extremely easy to do, and it can very easily lead to your death. Now if you'd like to see some more tips and tricks videos for 7 Days to Die, I've created a very special playlist that you can access by clicking the box in the top right corner of the screen. But for now, this is Savin saying thank you ladies and gentlemen for joining me in Savin's World and and remember, the average gamer is always king of the hill on the bell curve. Oh god, I did it again! No!